أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم فإنهم عدو لي إلا رب العالمين الذي خلقني فهو يهدين والذي هو يطعمني ويسقين وإذا مرضت فهو يشفين والذي يميتني ثم يحيين والذي أطمع أن يغفر لي خطيئتي يوم الدين رب هب لي حكما وألحقني بالصالحين رب الشحن صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي اللهم ثبتنا عند الموت بلا إله إلا الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ثم أما بعد Once again, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Here we are reading about Ibrahim alayhi salam, and I skipped a lot of the passage actually. I'm taking a very small excerpt from this passage, in which there's a dialogue between him and the people who do shirk from his community. And first of all, he declares that all of their false gods are an enemy to him. فَإِنَّهُمْ عَدُوٌّ لِي And then he declares an exception. إِلَّا رَبَّ الْعَلَمِينَ The only one left out from this Declaration of God's being enemy is the Lord of the world. So it's not just that I don't believe in other gods, they're all my enemy. So you see the strength with which he declares this Tawheed. He's not considered the author of the subject, and the leader for mankind for no reason. It is because he has an exceptional understanding of Tawheed. And you find, inshallah ta'ala, tomorrow also we'll be talking about him, alayhi salam. He says something very interesting. الَّذِي خَلَقَنِي فَهُوَ يَهْدِينِ I'll translate quickly, just notice the things he attributes to Allah Azza wa Jal, the Lord of the worlds. He says, the one who created me, and then he, he's the one who guides me. The one who created me, and he guides me, then he guides me. وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِي وَيَسْقِينِ And he's the one who feeds me and gives me to drink. The second two things, the first two things were, the, he created me and he guides me, then he feeds me and he gives me to drink. And then he says, وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ فَهُوَ يَشْفِينِ And when I get sick, then he cures me. Whenever I get sick, then he cures me. وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي فَمَحْيِينِ And he's the one who's going to give me death, then he's going to give me life again. And then the ayat go on and he makes dua afterwards, وَالَّذِي أَمَعُوا أَنْ يَغْفِرَ لِي خَطِيئَةِ يَوْمَ الدِّينَ And he's the one I hope that he will cover my mistakes, my grievous mistakes on the event. رَبِّ هَبْ لِي حُكْمًا My Lord, grant me wisdom of making firm decisions and make me firm in my decision to, to be on the وَالْحِقْنِي بِصَالِحِينَ And join me among the righteous. Keep me with the company of the righteous. And I mentioned this ayah in particular because yesterday we were, or a few days ago we were talking about the importance of friends. Right? And even in the dua of Ibrahim alayhi salam, when he's making dua to Allah for making him firm on his deen, he, he has, a, has a plan on staying firm, and his plan of action is, may Allah make me among those, or join me with those who are as salihin Nonetheless, those of you that know a little bit of Arabic know that in Arabic, when you have a fi'l or a verb, then you don't have to mention the pronoun. You don't have to mention he or she or you know they, it's already included inside the word. For, for example, you say khalaqa, it doesn't mean created, it means he created. So the word he is already embedded inside the word, Khalaqa. But the word he in Arabic, you know what the word he is in Arabic? Hua. Hua. Now listen, he says, Alladhi khalaqani, the one who created me. Did he mention the word hua? No. Then he says, Fahua yahdini. Now yahdi also has hua in it, it has a he in it. But does he mention hua separately? He does. And he's the one who guides me. So there's an emphasis on yahdi over khalaqa. And if you look at the next line, وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُطْعِمُنِ وَيَسْقِينَ when, when he comes to talking about feeding and giving drink, he puts a huwa there. But now in Arabic, simply speaking, if you say يُطْعِمُنِ وَيَسْقِينِ It means he gives me to drink, or he feeds me and he gives me to drink. He's already there, but he mentions it especially. And then, وَإِذَا مَرِدْتُ And when I get sick, فَهُوَ يَشْفِينِ He mentions huwa again. Now yashfi includes the, the pronoun huwa, but he, doesn't, he says it anyway, huwa. And then when he talks about giving death and giving life, وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ يُحْيِنِي He doesn't say وَالَّذِي هُوَ يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ هُوَ يُحْيِنِي He takes the هُوَ away. Right? So you notice sometimes he adds emphasis and other times he takes emphasis away. But everything he talks about is referring to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, the one who created, the one who guides, the one who gives, to food, gives food, the one who gives drink, the one who cures, 
the one who gives death, the one who gives life, all of them are attributed to Allah. So how come he emphasizes some more than others? Because he understands his audience. You see, most of the people who commit shirk have some concept of God already. They have some concept of Allah, but that concept is weak. It's not complete. It's missing some things. And Ibrahim alayhi salam, the genius that he is, we, we find remarkable things coming out of his mouth. Remarkable you know, impressions of his genius that are captured in the ayat of Qur'an. And one of them is he understands this audience that do believe in a God. And they believe that Allah or God, even nowadays, God does the big things. He, does the big, he created the universe, He's in charge of life, and He's in charge of death. But the little stuff on a day-to-day -day basis, that's not God's business, that's my business. Right? For God, there's the heavens and the earth and the stars and the earthquakes and you know, controlling the oceans, all this big stuff. But the little things in life, I'm in charge. This, this is what the human being starts to feel. And you know what, this is something even the Muslim can think. The Muslim will think, yes, I pray to Allah, He created me, He's the one who's going to judge me on the day of judgment, He will resurrect us, He will give me death. All of this is in His control. But when I have a headache, the Tylenol is going to cure me. It's not, you don't turn to Allah, you turn to Advil, right? And you know, you buy a car and you, you rely on the car because it's German engineering or it's you know, Japanese engineering or something, or it's a late model. So we have reliance on things, right? On day-to-day -day life. But when it comes to the big stuff, anybody, ask anybody, who's in control? Allah is in control. So now watch with this eye. He says, الَّذِي خَلَقَنِي The one who created me. Everybody believes that. So he doesn't highlight it. But then he says, فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ فَهُوَ يَهْدِينَ And he happens to be the one that guides me also. Meaning, on a daily basis, I need guidance from Allah. Should I go here? Should I not go here? Should I take this job? Should I not take this job? Should I travel or should I stay? Right? Should I write to them? Should I not write to them? Small things and big things, we need guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal. And we don't realize that. But we realize Allah is the Creator. So He wants to make us realize that you need guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal on a daily basis. So He highlights, huwa yahdeen. And then He says again about feeding and drinking. You know, nowadays it's so convenient. It's not even like we're living in the times of the desert where you go out and you like, you know, put the pitcher in the lake and, you know, in the pond and you filter it or whatever, or milk the cow and drink it. You pop the fridge open and you have ten different kinds of soda, five different kinds of juice, and then you complain, oh man, my flavor is missing. <laughs> right? These are the times we're living in. Or we have water, abundance of water, unlike any society in the history of the world, but we say the temperature is not right. <laughs> right? People in the past didn't have these luxuries. But you know when we give ourselves drink, or we go to the vending machine, put the dollar in and the drink comes out, right? You're thinking to yourself, I paid for it. Or let me get you a drink. Right? I'm the one giving the drink. I'm the one eating the food. I pulled over at the store, I got myself a sandwich and I had it. Right? But he emphasizes, no, it's not you who's feeding yourself. It's not your paycheck. It's not your credit card. Yeah, it's, it's not your money. What is feeding you? Who is feeding you? Allah Azza wa Jal. And it's at levels. One, who provides for the food. And two, the fact that the food actually serves as food. How, what is it that makes the food, the, the water we drink, serve as nutrition for our body? And what is it that keeps, us from be, keeps it from going to waste and our bodies would decay altogether? Every time we eat some food, it brings us energy, it brings us nutrition, it sustains us, it continues our life. But who makes that food serve that purpose? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So it's something to be realized. So He highlights it. Huwa yut'imuni wa yasqeen. And then something very peculiar. This is off on a tangent a little bit. Everything so far is huwa, huwa, huwa. He does. He created. He guides. He feeds. He gives to drink. And then He says, when I, get, when I became sick. Wa idha marittu. Now everything in is Allah's control, right? Death, in is, death is in Allah's control. Life is in Allah's control. Health is in Allah's control, and sickness is in Allah's control. But He doesn't say, وَالَّذِي amradani or يُمْرِضُنِي He was the one who makes me sick, and then He cures me. Why? Because of all the things that He mentioned, there's one thing that could be taken negatively. But He has this respect, this awe, this regard for Allah Azza wa Jal, even though He knows Allah is the cause of all causes, what does He say? I became sick. When I became sick. 
So you notice how he changes his tone of speech. And the other thing you will notice is, everything here is in the present tense. Khalaqah is obviously in the past tense because he's already been created. But he guides and he will guide. So there's hope in, the, in those words. He feeds and he will feed. So there's hope that Allah will feed. You place your hopes in Allah. But when he talks about sickness, he doesn't say amridu also. He doesn't say when I will get sick. You know why? Because he has better expectation from Allah. He doesn't expect Allah to make him sick. He says, whenever I had become sick in the past, then He guides me and he, he cures me and He will cure me. Right? But He doesn't attribute even sickness to the future because He has this hope with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? You don't, you don't have su one with Allah. You don't expect bad things from Allah. You know, a lot of times in our society, because we're living in a very capitalistic society, people try to sell you everything, right? Like they try to sell you health insurance or life insurance and these things. And they say, you know what could go wrong? Tomorrow you could be in a car accident. Or imagine if your hand got cut off in your factory working the next day. And they scare you of these horrible things that will happen to you, right? So you better get insurance. <laughs> you know, but Allah Azza wa Jalla, the one who has in Allah, what do they have? They have the best of expectations from Allah. You know, Allah Azza wa Jal even tells us in a hadith Qudsi, you know, and I am I am with whatever my slave assumes of me, that's how I am with him. So we assume the best with Allah, so Allah is the best with us subhanahu wa ta'ala. In any case, so he says, Wa Ida Marittu, Fahua Yashfi, and then he's the one who cures me. And he adds Hua on Yashfi. Why? Because again we don't attribute cure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala consciously. Maybe subconsciously if somebody asks you, Allah cured you, you say yes, alhamdulillah. But you weren't thinking like that. You were thinking like the medicine cured me, or the injection cured me, right? Or the allergy medicine is taking care of me. That's what we're thinking. So Allah, uh, you know, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam is trying to change our thinking process. We should be conscious of who is involved in our curing, in our feeding, right? So wahua. فَهُوَ يَشْفِينَ And then he says, وَالَّذِي يُمِيتُنِي ثُمَّ يُحِينَ Then the who is gone again. The one who will give me death, and the one who is going to give me life again, bring me back to life. Why? Because everybody is conscious of that. Whenever somebody dies, they know that this was in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what we remind each other of all the time. And you know, this is very interesting, that even in our times, you will have Muslims come together and say, this is from Allah. When will they say this? When a child is born, and when somebody dies. But when you're eating, and you're taking medicine, you know, then you don't say necessarily, this is from Allah. <laughs> you say, here, take this medicine. So even in our culture, you could see the weakness of Tawheed in our mindset, in that we don't attribute things to Allah Azza wa on a daily basis. And this is what Ibrahim alayhi salam is highlighting. Another thing that I'd like to comment here, inshallah, I will solve this riddle tomorrow, bi'idhnillah. You will notice whenever Ibrahim alayhi salam speaks, he attributes goodness to Allah. And he's the first one to thank Allah for things. The first one to thank Allah for any, the small things and the big things. Now the biggest thing that happens to him in his life, in worldly life, is Allah Azza wa Jal gives him a certificate. He hands him a diploma. And this is in the Qur'an. What is that certificate? إِنِّي جَاعِلُكَ لِلنَّاسِ imama. I am making you a leader over all of mankind. Imagine, in this world, Allah has assigned you a leader. You know you get a promotion at your job, or somebody gets elected as the president or somebody gets nominated as the general. Here Allah is appointing you, Ibrahim alayhi salam, as the leader over mankind. Imagine what bigger honor than this. But what we, what we find in inshallah tomorrow's discussion from Surah Al-Baqarah, is my favorite passage in the Quran, he does not, he's not recorded to have said Alhamdulillah first, or Alhamdulillah. He says something else first. So we have to understand why is it that the man who always attributes great, you know, gratitude to Allah Azza wa Jal immediately, why is it that before he mentions greatness to Allah Azza wa Jal, which he does later on, what does he mention first? There's something else on his mind. And if we understand that, inshaAllah ta'ala will lead good lives as leaders, because these are the attributes of a leader. Barakallahu li wa lakum fi al-Qur'an al-Hakim wa nafa'ni wa iyyakum bil ayat wa dhikr al-Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.